Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Boki Akimari. If this is your first time here, I'm a food blogger and food influencer here in Lagos, Nigeria. On my channel, I share food recipes, kitchen tips, kitchen hacks, and anything I just feel like is going to be useful to you guys, I share on this channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button now to subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell so that you know every time that I post new content. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a recipe for Nkwobi. If you're not from Nigeria, Nkwobi is tender pieces of cooked cow leg that is mixed with different condiments to give a really tender, delicious snack that we love to enjoy all across Nigeria, not just amongst the Igbo people. It's something that came from Eastern Nigeria, but everybody just loves it. I think so, because I really like it and I've learned how to cook it and it's really, really easy. You need only a few ingredients to make this Nkwobi come to life and I think that you're going to like it. If you love cow leg, this is something that you're going to love. It uses only a few ingredients. Let me run you through them. <laughs> For my own kobe, I'll be using cow foot. We also call it cow leg. So this is my cow foot. I got them to take out the bones because you don't need the bones in your own kobe. I'm also using uba. I'm using some chopped onions to cook my cow foot. I'm using some palm oil. This is Cameroon pepper, crayfish powder, and stock powder for taste. I'm also using potash. This is very important in Okobi and you have to have this. I'm using some salt and this is um, ground calabash nutmeg. I think it's called uhuru. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but I think it's called uhuru. You need this and potash especially in your Unkobi. And I'm going to use some utazi, some fresh utazi leaves as well as garnish. To start my Unkobi, I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces. They need to be really, really small because um, you usually pick them up with your fingers or with a toothpick, so they need to be bite-sized when you're making Nkobi. So I'm going to cut this into smaller pieces. This one has a bone in it, so I'm just going to leave it. But for the others, I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces. And this is the kind of size that we're looking for, bite size. It's always easier to ask them to take out the bones from your cow foot in the market because it's a daunting process if you don't do that. Always ask them if you're going to um, make unkobi. When you buy your cow leg or your cow foot, get them to take out the bone, the little, the middle bone, sorry, at the market. It's easier for them to use the big knife to take it out if you want to do it at home. I'm not sure that you can even succeed in doing it, so just get that done in the market to save yourself the headache. So this is all cut now. I'm going to wash it and then put it in a pot and season it and cook it until it's very, very soft. It has to be very, very soft. Falling apart kind of soft. So I'm going to start by adding my cow foot into the pot. I'm only going to season it with some onions, stock powder and salt. The rest of the seasoning comes when I'm putting the actual inkwobi together. This is just to cook my cow foot and get it ready. So this is some salt and then I'll add some water. A lot of water because this needs to cook until it's super tender. If you have a pressure cooker, you may want to use your pressure cooker to cut down your cooking time. But um, I wanted to show you this in case you didn't have one that you can still do it on the stove. And I know gas prices are through the roof now, but you can um, do it this way. I know there are tricks to get your cow foot to be soft, but I don't subscribe to those things. But if you wanted to do them, you can read up on how to get your cow foot to cook in a couple of minutes and um, do that. But I'll let mine cook now for about 45 minutes or so until it's really soft. 
My own probably is now really, really soft, as you can see, almost falling off the bone. This is what we want, because you just want to put it in your mouth and it just melts away. So I'm going to take this out from the stock now, and then I'll show you how to prepare the actual improbi. So I'm going to dissolve my potash in water. It's also called um, acal or calm if you're Yoruba. They call it calm, but some people call it acal and you know. But anyway, it's potash in English, I think. So we're going to dissolve some of that in water. Okay, so now that all this is dissolved in water, so in the pot or the pan where you want to make your mkobi, we're going to add some palm oil. Now, the amount of palm oil and the um, dissolved potash in water is what's going to form the liquid for your mkobi. So depending on how juicy you want it to be. I always recommend very juicy because you, know, you want to lick your fingers when you're eating and all of that. You want it to be really juicy. So you're going to, this is where you're going to get that quantity. In this palm oil now, I'm going to add some of this. And you can see it starts to um, sort of change color to this, I don't know what to call it, but it's kind of cloudy. And so this is what you need for your cow food and the uba to mix in to form that juiciness and unkobi that we like. I'm going to add a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is fine. So now I'm going to add my spices. So here's the ground ugur, which is the calabash nutmeg. I'm going to add some salt. I'll add some crayfish powder, some Cameroon pepper. I don't like the spice, so I'm only going to add a little bit. And then I'm going to add some stock powder. Now, even though I said that this didn't require any heat, when you've mixed it up, you can put it back on the heat just to warm it a little bit, not to cook it again, just to warm it, just to heat it, make it warm kind of thing but you don't really have to if you don't because my cow foot is still hot i warmed my uba so that's kind of warm too so i think i have the amount of heat that i need so next i'm going to add my uba again add as much or as little as you want and this is what you're looking for this and I'm going to add in my cow food now. And then I just combine this. And this is really how simple it is to make unkobe. I am telling you it is not a difficult process at all. You want to garnish it with some utazi. It also adds a bit of taste to it. But don't use too much because utazi is a very bitter leaf. So if you don't like it or you're not familiar with it, don't add too much. And then this is how we plate mkobi. When you go to eat it in the beer parlors or the restaurants, wherever they um, sell it, this is how they serve it. On this wooden bowl, and you think it's really dipped, but it, and you think it's really deep, but it's quite deceptive because it's not deep at all. We've all fallen for it at one point or the other. This bowl is not deep at all. And you think that the plate is filled with unkobe, but it's not. Anyway, so you garnish it with some onions, onion rings. And 
can just sprinkle a little bit more fresh otavi on it and this is what your ukori should look like. Ukobi seems like a very, very intimidating meal to prepare, but as you can see, it's pretty simple. Get your cow food cooked right, get the spices, the very specific spices, get that right and just put it together and it's quick and easy to prepare. For what it costs to eat outside, I think everybody should prepare their own Ukobi at home at a fraction of the cost. I know you've enjoyed watching this video, but let me know if you have. Please leave me your comments in the comment section. If you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, let me know also in the comment section and I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done it and I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Bye-bye.